stem of the European Union. I will now invite Mrs. Kathleen Cooper Brown, Chief Executive Officer of the Kingston Public and Victoria Jubilee Hospitals, to lead us in prayer. Good morning. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, as we invite your presence with us today, we ask that you continue to bless us, guide us, and protect us. Bless all the hands that has made this ProMac project a reality. Lord, we pray that with the addition of these new units, there will be better outcome for our patients. May your light continue to shine on us. These are not the mercies we ask through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Thank you, Mrs. Cooper Brown. In the running order for this program, we'll have the welcome and opening remarks, as well as remarks by the European Union delegation head and also by the Honorable Minister, and then the vote of thanks. The welcome and opening remarks. Dr. the Honorable Christopher Tufton, Minister of Health and Wellness, her Excellency, Ms. Malgrazato Vasilevska, Head, European Union Delegation to Jamaica. His Excellency, Mr. Joseph Maria Bosch Mesa, Spanish Ambassador. Mr. Jules de Papeke, Consul, Deputy Head of Mission, Embassy of Belgium. Mr. Dunstan Brand, Permanent Secretary in the Minister, Ministry of Health, sorry. Dr. Simone Spence, ProMac Coordinator. Mr. Wentworth Charles, Chairman of the Southeast Regional Health Authority. Ms. Maureen Golding, and Dr. Sandra Chambers, Regional Director and Regional Technical Director of the Southeast Regional Health Authority, respectively. Representatives of the Ministry of Health and Wellness, the Planning Institute of Jamaica, Victoria Jubilee Hospital, ladies and gentlemen, members of the media, welcome. Good morning to this official opening ceremony of the maternal and neonatal high dependency units at the Victoria Jubilee Hospital. The program for the reduction of maternal and child mortality PROMAP, funded by the European Union in partnership with the government of Jamaica constructed and refurbished existing spaces to create maternal and neonatal high dependency units here at the Victoria Jubilee Hospital. Today marks a significant achievement for us at this facility and these newly established HDUs will enable the BJH to continue providing quality care to our mothers and babies to secure our future. Welcome again and the crux of this ceremony is really about thanksgiving. It's about celebration and above all, what we can do when we collaborate and partner with others. At this time, 
We will have Her Excellency, Ms. Margaret Zanton Vashilevsko, head of the European Union delegation to Jamaica, to give us her remarks. Please make her welcome. Thank you so much, Madam Master of Ceremony. And if Minister allows me, I will speak without a mask because I think with my accent it will be easier to understand what I have to say. Uh, thank you so much for such a beautiful pronunciation of my complicated Polish name. Minister has been trying for four years and he still hasn't succeeded. So this really is uh, uh, quite something. Uh, but of course, he, he, he can call me on my short first name. It's not a problem at all. Um, Honourable, Doctor, Honourable Dr. Christopher Tufton, Minister of Health. Um, one problem with the mask is that I fail to recognize faces very well when so much of the face is covered. So I'm not sure whether we've got someone from the Planning Institute of Jamaica here with us. Planning Institute of Jamaica. Dr. Simon Spence, Director, Health Promotion and Protection of Ministry of uh, Health and Wellness and PROMA Coordinator. Ms. Diane McIsaac, Deputy CEO, Kingston Public and Victoria Jubilee Hospitals. Other health sector officials, members of staff of this fantastic hospital, thank you so much for being here with us. Um, members of the media, thank you for taking the time to come and uh, cover this event. Uh, my member state colleagues from Spain and Belgium and my own staff members. Um, Good morning, everybody. I always get moved uh, when I still get a chance to stand here and listen to Jamaican uh, anthem and then European anthem. It's always such a special moving moment for me, particularly because my time here is coming to an end. Um, many of you may know that our anthem is called Ode to Joy, and it is a joy indeed to be here today for such a fantastic occasion in this wonderful hospital with Minister, with my colleagues, with everybody else. And it is a joy for me personally to be able to open these fantastic units just before my time uh, is coming to an end. So it's a very happy moment for myself and for my European Union colleagues because today we are delivering to the government and people of Jamaica a facility that will help to ensure that all women with high-risk pregnancies who need high-quality healthcare facilities and life-saving equipment will be able to benefit from those services. And it's a special privilege to be here at the Victoria Jubilee Hospital. I know it's a favorite hospital um, to many Jamaicans and women in particular. And I want to thank the management and staff for accommodating us today. I also want to acknowledge the important role this hospital plays in delivering maternal and childcare as well as gynecological and reproductive health services to pregnant women from across Jamaica over the years. We salute you. It is clear that Jamaicans hold this hospital in high esteem and the European Union is happy to have supported construction of a six-bed high dependency unit, a brand new operating theater and an isolation suite for pregnant women who require those services. For the tiniest and most vulnerable Jamaicans, those premature and sick newborn babies, we are happy to have facilitated expansion of the neonatal facilities to accommodate four high dependency beds, creation of isolation suites, as well as the refurbishment of space for a 24 bed general nursery facility. The work done at this hospital is part of a larger European Union funding support to the government of Jamaica to strengthen the health system and to reduce the number of unfortunate deaths of mothers and children at birth and in keeping with the government of Jamaica's own development goals. We are delighted to be accompanying Jamaica on this journey and we are very hopeful about the possibilities for meaningful impact given the foundations laid under this program. I will not go through all the activities the program included over the years. I will just mention it started back in 2013 by both ministers and my predecessors, and it's a privilege and a joy to continue and see the, uh, what the program has delivered over the years. Amongst the things that were delivered, though, are the four 
dependency units. This is the second one we're opening. But also training of over 200 medical personnel and 1,000 primary healthcare workers to improve the quality management of high-risk pregnancies and empowering people to take ris responsibility for their own health. Yesterday, the National Family Planning Board launched a public education component of PROMAC dubbed Clinic is a Must and Healthy Body is a Must to get pregnant women to attend clinic and take care of themselves and their unborn babies. I hope this message will be spread far and wide. Health is the foundation on which all our hopes and aspirations are built, and everyone from the poorest to the richest, from the newborn baby to the elderly, has the right to access preventive health care and to benefit from treatment to protect well-being and save lives, because the right to health is a basic human right. The COVID-19 experience, which we are still going through, has highlighted the importance of countries having strong public health systems and responses to protect and preserve lives, not only in emergencies, but at all times. And although this program is ending, our support to the health sector is by no means over, or, uh, or else this minister would not let me sleep at night. The European Union will continue to support health system strengthening in Jamaica and the region through the contribution of regional programs through CARFA, and also through substantial funding uh, to PAHO to enhance coordination and increase the climate resilience of health system in CARIFOM countries to better prepare and respond to climate threats. Specifically in Jamaica, the European Union has approved funding for the health system strengthening program uh, where EU will co-finance an ongoing loan from uh, Inter-American Development Bank uh, we will contribute a grant of 10 million euro to strengthen the Jamaican health system in order to tackle the surge of non-communicable diseases. But COVID-19 has also presented all of us a teaching opportunity. Let us heed the lessons and put in place a strong health system for the benefit of all Jamaicans. In the area of maternal and neonatal care, PROMAC provides a good example of how we can work together to achieve that goal. This high dependency unit, which I'm really looking forward to visiting shortly, is a reflection of our commitment to support Jamaica as one of our key partner countries in this region to strengthen the health system and to ensure that no one is left behind and no human right is ignored. I look forward to hearing in the near future the success stories of how this high dependency unit and the service they provide are hastening a reduction in maternal and child mortality in Jamaica. Although the flip side of this coin is that I hope that as few women and as few babies will need the support of these units. I'd like to take this opportunity to thank the Minister of Health personally, your team, uh, all the other health workers, but also uh, our staff, staff from PIOJ and my own staff but all the contractors and all the service providers for such a successful and timely delivery of these badly needed units. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Vasilevska. At this time, we invite the remarks of the Honorable Christopher Topton, Minister of Health and Wellness. Thank you very much. This mass thing is getting to me now, but I have to lead by example, right? Yes. And COVID is alive and well, right? Yes. You see, we have a very faithful audience. That's very good. Uh, so let me begin by, of course, recognizing uh, Her Excellency Waleska. <laughs> Madam Ambassador, how are you? Yesterday we were together, last week we were together. Are you sure you are not applying for uh, citizenship here in Jamaica? We'll be happy to arrange it for you. No, but it's, it's really a privilege to, to spend time with you and uh, under extremely pleasant circumstances. 
but also very important for the development of public health. And I thank you, uh, ambassadors, members of the diplomatic community of the European Union, Spain, um, Belgium. I think that's it, right? Okay, great. Good to have you also. Uh, other distinguished ladies and gentlemen in the audience, um, of course, the Victoria Jubilee Hospital staff, um, management, administrators, and of course, I cannot miss the well-dressed uniform nurses, matron and others. Um, good morning to you all. Doctors, do I see any doctors in the house? Yes, at the extreme back. Oh, wow, I see the SMOs and the board chairperson, Dr. Reed, and of course, chairman of, of, of Sierra, Mr. Wentworth Charles, good to have you, sir. And Maureen Golden, who is the, the regional director. Uh, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, so this is not a long ceremony because I know you're not here to see me. Um, I know you're here to see the facilities, right? And to officially commission the facilities. Uh, we've, we've been at this for a while in terms of this very important initiative. And I want to begin by again placing on record the appreciation of the Jamaican people, the Jamaican government, uh, to the European Union for this PROMAC program, which, as Madam Ambassador said earlier, started all the way back in 2013, before our time, but we have delivered on the work that started by others. And as you know, we have had many close misses in terms of meeting deadlines, in terms of taking full advantage of the 22 million euros but I think we've been able to do right by those who had the vision. And I think the Jamaican people will be better for it. And I think the relationship between the European Union and Jamaica will be stronger for it. So again, much appreciation, uh, much thanks. To the local members of the project, uh, Dr. Simone Spence, who I didn't recognize earlier, but I will know. Um, she almost looked like a member of the European delegation. Maybe it's a must. Um, thank you very much for leading this charge, as well as the other members of the team at the Ministry of Health and Wellness, and to those here at Victoria Jubilee Hospital who would have had to coordinate and manage uh, the implementation of this unit. I think it's important to recognize you and to say um, you will be better for it also. This, this hospital, of course, is legendary in many respects, um, the Victoria Jubilee Hospital. It, it, you know, oftentimes when Victoria makes the news, Victoria Jubilee, is because of a mishap, right? I believe the last headline story you got was what? was about the elevator and the cameraman in the stairway, right? He wasn't supposed to be there, but he was in the stairway taking pictures of somebody going up into a, on a floor. Um, but rarely, and not enough, I should say, maybe not rarely, but not enough do we make the news on the achievements that this institution represents and, frankly speaking, accomplishes every single day. And I think it's a verbal round of applause for that. Uh, this institution is the largest of its kind in the, English, in the Caribbean in terms of a maternal uh, hospital dealing with giving births. I mean, last year, well, I think you give anywhere between six and 8,000 deliveries per year, which means five, at least 500 um, per month. That's a whole heap of little babies that are delivered at this hospital. Calculated that by days, hours, and you recognize how critical and how important not only is the physical structure, but those who are given the charge to take care of persons who come in. And Victoria Jubilee has really stepped up to the responsibility that it has, and I am prepared to say far more good than not so good is done here on a 
on a daily um, basis. I was reflecting on some of the things that we have done in recent time. We have purchased some additional equipment, ultrasound machine. We have done some refurbishing of our operating theaters. Am I correct? I see the nurses, they are doing this. Now, let me tell you, they are hard to please the nurses. No, they are going to do that. Either. Right? We have done the new elevators, state of the art. And Madam Ambassador, it's not only Europe alone of elevators that talk to you, right? When you go in there and press it, it tell you which. Is that true? Tell you which floor you're on. So that's, that's bringing it in, bringing Victoria Jubilee in the modern times, and fittingly so. And uh, there have been other um, attempts at improvement, you know, retiling the aesthetics, the, the, the entrance of the facility, because we want the facility, as old as the building is, to reflect the very good record of performance that, that the institution um, uh, represents. And so, you know, when the component of this PROMAC program that involves building out high dependency units um, would have been conceived and approved of, you could not leave this institution out. Because by far, this is the institution that sets all the standards, that does sufficient work to go through the learning curve that demonstrates its worth and worthiness in terms of maternal uh, care. So we are happy. I am certainly happy that you are included. I'm certainly happy that we can now open the doors of this facility. And as was said by Madam Ambassador, this is one of four a week and a half ago or two weeks ago we're in St. Anne. We have Spanish Town coming up and also uh, Bustamante Hospital for Children. And uh, there are so many other components to this program that are worthy of note, which has been said earlier. And again, our appreciation, the training of staff, whether doctors or, or nurses or uh, primary healthcare staff, very important uh, to the process. So my charge to you here today, having given thanks to the European Union and to all who have been a part, is to use the facility to further the very good track record that you have. Um, I have never been in any doubt as to the, 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 the expertise, the dedication and commitment of the staff here, indeed our public health staff right across Jamaica. I mean, the COVID fight is an indication of how dedicated they are. Um, where we have had a challenge in public health has been in our infrastructure to a large extent. I mean, we can always improve in all areas, but the infrastructure has been a big challenge. And it speaks to what the sustainable development goal, goal number three, good health and well-being for all at all ages. We have to live true to that commitment that we have signed on to. And part of that is to ensure that we upgrade facilities. And I'm not ashamed to say, now that I'm coming close to the end of my political life cycle, right? The, the administration, that is. You know, we, have, we have very short life cycles, you know, right? It's four and a half years now. And uh, I believe now is the time to talk about the fact that we have done some things over that period of time. Many of it coming from before, and we recognize and salute those who were before, but we have delivered on some additional things that we think are going to be necessary in going forward. As part of achieving that sustainable development goal three. For starters, we have completed a development plan, a 10-year strategic development plan. It's now on paper, and it, it looks at public health, where we are, where we need to be, and how we're going to get there, what's the roadmap. Secondly, we have secured resources to implement that plan. Because, you know, people can say, boy, you're just a set of talkers. You just talk and you don't act. Well, we have a plan, but we have some money also. And by the way, some of that money comes right from the pockets of the European Union, European people, right? And that development plan is supported by the IDB, a 50 million US loan facility. I think it's 10 million euros uh, added to that to complement. And as we speak, 
we're doing the architectural work on a number of hospitals, uh, Spanish Town, St. Anne's Bay, Clarendon, or Maypen, and I believe some work is being done next door also as it relates to KPH. Um, you know what's happening in Montego Bay in terms of the new children's hospital and of course the Cornwall Regional Rehabilitation. So my view is that over the next three to five years, we are going to see the largest investment in public health infrastructure that Jamaica has seen perhaps for the last 25 years. And I'm proud to say that as the minister coming to the end of my political life cycle. How is that? You can clap if you want to know. I'll, I'll, pass, on the, I'll pass on the recognition to the other the prime minister and others. So we, are, we recognize that there is a need for improvement. And we are committed to building out to achieving that improvement. We are committed to training more staff. Uh, we have, through the Ministry of Finance and the Cabinet, approved um, almost, I think, 1,500 it is, new posts for our nurses. Because many of our nurses, many of you here have had to work on contract. You don't have security of tenure, right? Uh, because there is no established post within the public health infrastructure because the last time we had established post was probably in the 1970s and the population has expanded, the demands on the system have expanded and we have put those established posts. So guess what? Many have to work, sign a new contract, you don't get the longer term benefits and no wonder many of you decide when you see greener pastures growing elsewhere that you're going to catch a flight and go to those places. Health care professionals perhaps are the most mobile globally because of the global shortage of healthcare care professionals. So there is no development plan that can take place if we do not invest in the people who manage the system. And I believe that Jamaica's healthcare workers are long overdue for a serious injection of investment in expanding and developing our further the capacities that we have and giving you the assurance that you are important. And COVID has taught us many things as a country. But one of the things that I believe we should not lose sight of is how important public health is and how important the public health professional is to the sustainability of our country. There is no economic development that we will achieve if you do not have sustainable health care, which includes buildings, equipment, and people. And we must emphasize that and use the COVID experience to re-energize the approach to building out that infrastructure. So I think we're on our way, and what we have to do is manage that process. But key to that is partnership. And we can't do it on our own. In fact, I'm prepared to say, again, a lesson from COVID reinforced that the world is as vulnerable from a public health perspective as the weakest link, no matter where in the world you are. You see that dust cover outside? You see that, that, that dust cover outside, which is now forcing those who have not obeyed the order to wear masks, no wanting to wear masks? Huh? I want you to know that is Africa it coming from. And where is it going to end up? Far from Africa. Let me put it as simplistic as possible. And the same could be said for Zika. The same could be said for malaria, for Ebola, for COVID. Because that's the nature of the world we live in. The world is not such a big place. And we have made it much smaller by virtue of the advances that we have made in travel, in movement. So we are all vulnerable. And therefore, the partnership is absolutely critical. So we cherish the partnership that the European Union represents and all the other partnerships that are critical to building out that infrastructure that is critical. The final point I'd make as it relates to this infrastructure, and I've totally abandoned my script, I'm sorry, um, is that the beneficiaries, the people who use the infrastructure, our mothers and potential mothers, need to 
recognize the importance of following the procedures, the, the, the protocols, the appropriate approach both in their lifestyle as well as in terms of accessing the facilities that we have at an institution like this. Um, I was astonished when I started to appreciate more what you do here and told by doctors and nurses here that some mothers or expectant mothers turn up to have their babies the first time when the baby is about to pop out and, be, and, be, and, 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 and come into reality. In other words, you're pregnant for nine months, whatever, and the first time you see a doctor is when you feel like the baby is coming out. Am I right? Am I right? Now let me tell you something. My view on that is that it takes a very good doctor and a very good nurse, supported by very good equipment, like what we are putting here, to, to give any form of guarantee that that baby is going to be, is going to be born um, in a healthy state. Because you really don't know what the situation is until the last minute. And one of the, sometimes I feel sympathy for you hear, when you hear the stories of injuries and mishaps which we all regret and we don't want, but when you look at the backstory, you realize that these complications sometimes were created because procedures were not followed, not from the institution perspective, but from the person who is seeking to access the service. And so one of the things that we're going to have to do, which is why so I bring everything in, which is why Clinic is a Moss, which was launched yesterday by the European Union as an important component of this initiative, is so critical. We have to educate, inform, and motivate our Jamaican women to understand the importance to their child and to themselves to following the procedure. Visit your clinic, visit your doctor, get the assessment done, know what your complications or issues are so that you get the best possible care. And we're not, in, we're not excluding the fathers, by the way, because there is no mother without a father, at least not yet. How is that? And so the fathers have a very important role to play. So this, this today is an indication that we're committed. I want to place on record our appreciation to the European Union, but to you here also at Victoria Jubilee Hospital, and to say to those who will access the service, let us ensure that we use it in a way that it was intended and let our lifestyle and our approach to using it reduce the necessity for the complications which may require the kind of high dependency service that should be there, but hopefully not used nearly as often enough. Thank you very much, God bless you. Thank you, Minister, for your remarks and your work. At this time, we'll have Ms. Maureen Golding, Regional Director, to come and move the vote of thanks for us. Please make her welcome. by example. Masters of Ceremonies, Mrs. Dion MacIsaac, Deputy CEO for the Kingston Public and the Victoria Jubilee Hospital. Doctor, the Honorable Christopher Tufton, Minister of Health and Wellness. Mr. Dunstan Bryan, our Permanent Secretary for the Ministry of Health and Wellness. 
is Ex Her Excellency Miss Malgorzata Vesheliska. Hope I got that right. European Union Ambassador and other distinguished ambassadors from the EU. Dr. Simone Spence, ProMAC Coordinator, Ministry of Health. Mr. Wentworth Charles, our board chairman for the Southeast Regional Health Authority. Dr. Stephanie Reed, our chairperson for the Hospital Management Committee, KPH and the VJH. Dr. Sandra Chambers, Regional Technical Director for the Southeast Regional Health Authority. Mrs. Cooper Brown, Acting CEO, VJH KPH Hospitals. Dr. Garth McDonald, Senior Medical Officer, Victoria Jubilee Hospital. Mrs. Elise Fairweather Blackwood, Director of Nursing Services, Victoria Jubilee Hospital. Senior Directors from the Ministry of Health and Wellness and the Southeast Regional Health Authority. Other specially invited guests, members of staff, both from VJH and the KPH, members of the media, good morning to you all. First, let me express utmost thanks to the Almighty God for sparing our lives and allowing us to be here on this momentous occasion. It is indeed my pleasure to express our profound gratitude to all who made this morning's event a reality. Mrs. McIsaac, thank you for chairing this morning's proceedings. Good job. Mrs. Gopher Brown, thank you very much for inviting the presence of God in our midst this morning. Many, many thanks and appreciation to our ambassador for her kind words. Ambassador, we are truly grateful to you and the EU for the funding provided to make this project a reality. The Victoria Jubilee Hospital has the distinction as the national maternity hospital that handles complex maternal cases and indeed the establishment of the neonatal and the maternal high dependency units will complement the efforts made by our highly dedicated medical and nursing teams in the management of high-risk pregnancies and neonatal care. Minister Tufton, sir, we thank you, although you say you diverted from your script, but we thank you for taking time out of your busy schedule to deliver the key note address that was well received. I must also say thanks to members of the, I call it, collaborative planning team that consisted of persons from the EU, Ministry of Health and Wellness, PIOJ, KPH, BGH, and the SARA PR team. Thanks to the staff of the Victoria Jubilee Hospital who exercised great patience during the period of construction of the high dependency units. Thanks to all the media houses that are here this morning providing coverage and for their positive support. In closing, let me reiterate my deepest appreciation to all who have contributed in one way or another to make this event a success. God bless you all. Thank you, Ms. Golding, for that vote of thanks. The first segment of the ceremony is ended. We have just concluded same. Now we'll be moving on to the unveiling of the plaques, the ribbon cutting, as well as the walkthrough for the neonatal and maternal high dependency units. Now please listen to the instructions. So Minister Tufton, and Ambassador, Ambassador sorry, Vashilevsko will do the unveiling of the plaques and they will go along with here and there. Uh, for the ribbon coffee, we will have the EU Member State Ambassador, Dr. Simone Spence, Permanent Secretary Johnson Graham, Mr. Corinne Golding, Dr. Chambers, and Mr. Glenn Burchard.